The pro-council in Acts was amazed at the doctrine of the Lord. It was something that they never heard of in, the, in, in their entire lives because they spent their time in the world or perhaps in the synagogue of Satan where they were doing oral Torah. They were doing orally. They didn't understand the scriptures as it is today because they're not studying with the Holy Spirit. They've given themselves over to men. They're men pleasers. And Jesus Christ says they're men pleasers and they've been given over to a reprobate mind. They're eyes are dim the eye is the lamp of the body it is the consciences of humanity the conscience of this physical body and the conscience of the spiritual body now when the spirit of god the breath of god is in the consciences of humanity the two nostrils of god that breathe life into adam it tells the heart to live because when god created he said live 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 he didn't say die the breath of God in humanity says to live. He says the heart to start beating. And the human body receives life. And that's what God is. He's a God of life. He's not a God of death. And God says that when your conscience is right, filled with the Holy Spirit, then your heart rejoices. And just as the conscience brings out the streams of the living God in our spiritual body, so does the heart bring all those goodness and pumps through the physical body, the streams of life, the proverb says. Keep your heart diligent because out from it issues the streams of life. Out from your heart comes out the streams of life. And that is through a joyful heart. And the commandment is to rejoice. And how are you going to rejoice without the Spirit of God dwelling within you? You see, that's the test that God has set before all humanity. That you would feel for God, that your conscience, the odor of God within you, would search for His righteousness in and amongst a darkened world. God says He wants His light to shine through you, through the darkened world. The universe represents the soul of humanity, and God stretched it out with the breadth of His fingers, with His hand. That's the distance He wanted. And it's separation because God says it's your sins, the reason why you're separated from me. And our souls, he says, I will stretch you out. God stretched out the firmament of the heavens. He's going to stretch you out until he gets an answer. And what is the answer today to God? When you're, when you're in dire need of God, when you hear the gospel of God, you know God is looking in your heart right now? And God is saying that he's going to get that answer, and he's getting that answer right now out of your hearts. Whatever your thoughts are, because God knows all the thoughts of the heart. Bible says that a plan, the plans of the mind belongs to man, but God weighs the spirit. Proverbs says that the way of a man seems right in their own eyes, but the ends thereof lead to death. God says in Psalms 50, chapter, three, uh, chapter 50, verse 3, he says that God peers down from heaven and he looks into the hearts of all humanity to see if anyone does righteously. And then what happens? He blesses them. And that's what God wants to do with you today. God wants to give you a blessing. But you have to make an agreement with his patriotism. And what is the patriotism of God other than his throne, his city in heaven, his kingdom? God's not a patriot of Canada or America or Great Britain or, or Russia. He's not a patriotism of any country of the world. This is the world that murdered him. And that's what he's coming to avenge. You know, Somebody shakes their fist at the love of Jesus Christ. Somebody shakes their fist at the gospel of Christ. When the ox is treading out the grain through the spirit of the living God, they're actually shaking their fist at God Almighty himself. Knowing we are not, do you think that's a healthy thing to do? Your creator who created you? Are you going to bite the hand that gave you life? Are you going to just walk around aimlessly in this world? You know, God does not labor in vain. He doesn't sow in vain. God didn't put you here for no good reason. You're here for a purpose. Are you going to find out that purpose? Or are you going to be transformed by the devil, the temporary God of this world? Are you going to walk in the way of Satan? Or are you going to fight? Are you going to do spiritual warfare? Are you going to fight with the Holy Spirit for your very lives and seek God? You know what God said? He said, blessed are those who seek for righteousness and justice of God, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. But all the God mockers will end up in hell. You see, God is a greater mocker than you are. 
God is more wicked than you are. God can be a lot more stubborn than you. And God says that He won't bat an eye. He'll put you down. If that's what it takes to get you to humble yourself, yeah, He will. Look at the world. He's already doing it. Look at the world. Look at what God is doing. The COVID-19 is throughout the entire world. The economy is halted. It's a new world order. New world order. Do you know what new world order and chaos is? It is the plan of God. Lucifer has its own new world order. It mimics God. It's incredible. Look at what happened in Genesis. It was order out of chaos. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and voidness and covered, and, and darkness covered the face of the deep. Do you know what the face of the deep is? It's the fourth dimensional spirits. Darkness covered the face of the deep. Darkness covered the face of the deep. It was darkness shrouding the entire creation. The darkness of the devil, not the darkness of God. But you see, what I just said is that God has a darkness. Oh yeah, God has his own smoke screen. And he's going to program and he's going to project all wickedness into the lake of fire. They're going to, the world is completely messed up. Their brains are messed up. They're crazy. They're mentally ill. And God says it's because they have rejected me and I have programmed them and projected them into the lake of fire. They're going to turn their back away from God. They're going to walk outside wherever they go in the arid places where the scripture says the place they are. Nobody knows where they are except God, but it's a place that is of death. It's a place of complete finality of existence to their own free will. Oh yeah, God got a warfare. You mess around with God's, you mess around with the minds of people, God's going to mess with your mind. You lie to people, God's going to lie to you. Oh yeah, you deceive your neighbor, God's going to deceive you. He's cause and effect all the way. Read it in Leviticus 26. You walk contrary unto me, I'm going to walk contrary unto you. He says, go, go and serve your gods. See if they can help you in your time of need. Well, you know what? I had lung disease in 2017. The Holy Spirit gave me that. And I knew and I saw it. And in 2018, I couldn't breathe. I almost died. I think I did die. Gulping for air. I couldn't breathe. 2019, I walked through the judgment of the COVID-19 year. 2020, through the judgment execution of the year of the COVID-19. 20, rather. And I'm completely healed through the Spirit of the living God. Completely healed. There's my testimony. No following policy procedure and protocols of the devil. You see? None of that. No, I was completely healed and I'm healed to this day. And I'm here to witness and testify to the love of God. I'm here to testify and witness to the mercy of the Lord, to the love of God, and that God can do the same thing for you if you humble your heart and you seek with all your heart, mind, and strength. Because there's a way with God. And the way with God is that you follow His laws, obey His commandments, and then God will look at you. God will bless you when you make that agreement in your heart. You want to rebel against God? The best way to rebel against God is by following His laws so that He'll bless you. That's the best way to rebel against God. You want to hate God? You want to get mad at God? Obey His laws until He blesses you. And then you'll get over it, right? You know? It's like they say, take a couple of aspirin and call me in the morning. Well, you'll have a good, sweet night sleep when you go to sleep and your heart is filled with joy because the Holy Spirit of God healed you and blessed you. Then you'll be happy. Then your heart will be filled with joy. You see? In Romans, Paul writes to the eternal spirit. He says, faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God and only the word of God. But how can anyone hear unless an ordained preacher of Christ is sent to them? You see, you're not going to hear this stuff in the churches. You're not going to hear this anywhere. This is where you hear these things. You know that Jesus Christ was the greatest protester in the history of creation? And on the eighth day, on that great day, the last day of the feast, Jesus Christ shouted out in the streets. He says, anyone who's still thirsty, let him come here and drink. That worked out well you see, He's a protester. Yeah, he rose from the dead and now he has sitting on the right yeah, horse. The right throne of God. It worked out very well because he defeated death on the cross and he received the kingdom and he set up a porthole of everlasting life for all humanity 
and he destroyed the works of Lucifer, Satan, the devil. That's how it worked out for him. Yeah, it worked out for me too. And it can work out for you if you get your heart right with God and, and stop mocking. Because God is a greater mocker than you are. He's more stubborn than you are. He's mightier than you are. And you're gonna have to bow down to him. You gotta bow down to God. You gotta you gotta get to God and bow down to God. It's not about a man. I can't save you. I'm just a billboard. That's all I am. But God sent me here so he could bless you, so you can hear, because God wants to create and produce on its own. God says to get some wisdom, get some understanding, get the light of God in you, and have joy in your heart. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Mask, mask, you don't, you don't have to wear a mask outside. You're committing idolatry against God. Oh, you're an idolater, you see? You're an angry idolater. It's all, it's all because you don't have the grace of God. You don't have the peace of God in your heart that surpasses all understanding. You just don't have the love of God. You're fighting, you're rebelling against God. You hear the gospel and you get upset at the gospel. You're not fighting against me, you're fighting against God. Yeah, you're fighting against God. If I was here playing a guitar and I had an open casket here and I'm playing, man, I'd be making some money right now. I'm preaching to you the gospel and you guys are hiding your faces and you're putting your faces in the sand and you're getting all upset. Oh, there's something wrong. When you're going to worship the devil and you're going to shake your fist at the love of the greatest act of love in the history of creation, it's time to examine your lives, man. You know what the legacy of Jesus Christ is? He died on, on the cross for you. He didn't only die for the people he loved, he died for his enemies, oh Babylon. That whoever receives that love and says yes and makes the agreement as a blessing will receive eternal life. Anybody? Oh yeah, that's the legacy of Christ. And then you're shaking your fist at that? Oh, you got a problem, my friends. You've been indoctrinated by the devil. You've, you've grown up without Christ. You've, you've, you're rebelling against God now. But God's saying, yet even now, O Babylon, all you ends of the earth, come to me now and I will bless you. And you know how you do that? You do it when you give them a, a, an offering with your heart, a grain offering. You give them many, many, many thanks, a cereal offering, many thanks, and God will bless you. He's looking in your heart right now. And you're going to ignore the message, and you're going to say no, you're going to shun the message. Well, God's not going to bless you. You're going to walk away from your blessing. And it's here for, for you today. God sent me here to preach. That's what he sent me here to do. I didn't know you guys were here. I saw this lineup. I figured it out. My friends, God will heal you. He'll take care of all your sickness, all your infirmities. When you, before you put that gift on the altar to God, my friends, make it right with everybody in your life. Read the Proverbs. Go into your secret place, the Lord said. And pray to your Heavenly Father, and there He will bless you when you seek with all your heart and mind and strength. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done yesterday, what you've said today. It doesn't matter. When, you're, when that time comes, a time and chance, which is now, and God sees something in you, and you make that agreement according to the patriotism of His throne, of His kingdom, according to His believism, His way, His religion, He'll bless you. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday, or skin, color skin, or whatever it is. The, the royal bloodline is the entire creation. What God requires is that you receive a blessing. He's got the whole market cornered. The only way to receive a blessing is if you can please God. Is your heart humble enough to please God? Are you so hardened? Well, God says you got to till that dry soil. You got to have the seed planted in your conscience. And you have to have it watered. And then God will give it growth. You see, God wants to bless you today. Receive the love of Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid. God says, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid to come out of the covenant with death. Don't be afraid to step out of the world. God says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Greater he that is with you than anything that is in the world. God created it all. God is more, he's omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. Lucifer saying the devil is only a created cherub. That's all it is. It is nothing before God. 
God says don't be afraid and don't let anybody be afraid to step over the threshold from the world into the kingdom of God. Make that agreement with the Lord Jesus Christ today and be saved, my friends, and stop rebelling against the Lord. Don't rebel against the Word of God. Don't rebel against the cross of Jesus Christ. It is the greatest act of love in the history of creation, the breadcrumb for all humanity, the bar, the drink. It is the, the food store. It is everything. It is the storehouse. It is the secret place of the Most High God. It is the heart of God, the very place of creation. The heart of God is on that cross. And that is a portal of life, a window of opportunity. That you may make that agreement with God and step into it with both feet and stop being lukewarm and playing around with your lives here in this world. God sent you here for a reason. He's, we're here to destroy, overthrow, and conquer sin, death, and hell in our own lives. That's what we're here to do. That's why God put us here. God is going to let wickedness manifest to the very, very uh, end. And then he's going to destroy it, and he's perfecting and glorifying his creation at the exact same time. That's what he's doing. Oh yeah, he knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. We don't know what we're doing, but God knows what he's doing, and God is involved. He made a covenant. He knows without him, we cannot live without him. He knows that without him, we cannot follow the laws. He knows that. God knows that. He has to be involved. If not, we would all have been dead by now. You see, God made a covenant. And a covenant involves the person who made the covenant to show us the way. Where, where, where's God now? God is in heaven and He's looking in your heart right now. He's omnipresent. God is invisible. His spirit is throughout the entire world. He's in the midst of the entire world. And this is the altar that's in the midst of Egypt. This is the altar that's in the midst of the entire world. And God is going to judge the entire creation according to the, the, His covenant. He says, I'm going to judge you at the border of my covenant. Now the border of His covenant reaches to heaven because He owns all things. If you want to get into heaven, you want to get into heaven, ask God all those good questions that you have with a humble heart and a broken spirit humble and spread out to God he says according to your all your sins you have not yet resorted to shedding your soul before God no you're just asking these questions just out of strife and contention well God says it can't inherit the kingdom of God lying doesn't inherit the kingdom of God trampling over the garden of God doesn't inherit the kingdom of God swearing and lying and deceitfulness and hatred anger malice pride arrogance killing murder slandering jealousy it doesn't enter the kingdom of God because it's destroying his garden. I mean, like, think about it. If you, if you had a nice rose garden and someone keeps trampling over your expensive rose garden, all your exotic seeds, your vegetable garden, and someone keeps driving over with their wheels, is that not going to kind of want you, want you to maybe try to get them to not do that? At the very least, well, you're the garden of God. The whole universe is the garden of God. The garden of God is being trampled underfoot. And God is saying, no! There is no death in the kingdom of God. There is no lying in the kingdom of God. God is our righteousness, my friends. Not our own bellies. Not my brain. Nothing to do with me. I'm just a billboard. That's all I am. I can't save you. I can't bless you. I can't even save myself. But God can do it. And we see that in our lives every single day. Because we received the baptism. God gave us the baptism. The baptism of eternal life. And that's the one baptism, my friends. In this world, there's billions of baptisms. How many people? Seven point something billion people? There's seven point something different baptisms in this world. If you can handle it. Oh, you get bap baptized at work, at church. You get baptized when you're in the bar. You get baptized when you're doing your uh, recreational things and groups and meetings and thoughts and with the sport dimension you're doing yoga, you're meditating on the universe, you're invoking these uh, gods that are not of God, these demons in your life, you're getting baptized there. Oh, there's all kinds of alcohol, drugs, all type of baptisms, all types. Do you think those lead to kingdom of God? Do you think they lead into the kingdom of God? No, none of them. There's one. There's one. 
Scripture says there's one spirit, there's one God, there's one book, one name under heaven that all men are to be saved. One! One spirit that came who was able to defeat all sin, death, and hell. Nobody in the history of creation was able to do it. God gave them an opportunity to do it in the coming of Moses based on natural selection of, the, of, the, of humanity, and they failed miserably. And it's not because they were not smart. It's not because they didn't follow, try to follow the laws. There were times when they got super blessed, but they couldn't do it because they got sin inside of them because the devil is too powerful. You see, we can't save ourselves. We don't have transcendency in our lives. The only transcendency we have is through God Himself, the Creator, Jesus Christ. He's the one-tenth of the hand. He is the finger of God. He is the day star that rises up in our hearts. He is the Holy Spirit of God, the Father that was sent here to deal with it at the right appointed time. And this is exactly what He did. He said, I have life in myself to put my life down. I have life in myself to bring my life back up again. That's what he said. He says, I am the, the way, the truth, and the life. No one has eternal life except through me. He says, I am the resurrection. I'll raise him up in the last day. He says, anybody who believes in me will never die. He said that I am the light of all men. I'm the manna that came from heaven. And my Father is in heaven. And I came from my Father who's in heaven. And no one has ever seen him but me. He said all those things and more. And they wanted to kill him for it. And they ended up succeeding. They murdered him. But through the forbearance of God, the resurrection of Christ defeated all the works of the devil. Through the resurrection of Christ, all death and sin and hell was defeated at the cross. God is righteous now in executing judgment. And he gave all the authority to that man, Jesus Christ who came in the flesh. He gave him all the authority and the power of the minion. And his will is of the Father because he is the omnipresence of the Father, as the scriptures say very clearly. And my friends, the Jesus Christ of the Holy Bible is the one you will experience in your life. He's the one who will dwell in your conscience. He's the one who will manifest himself to you. He's the real one. He's the real one. The other gods, they don't do those things. There's only one God who manifests himself. There's only one God who affirms himself and speaks to you in your conscience when the Holy Spirit goes into us and abides with us and we receive the baptism of that spirit, the spirit of the resurrection of Christ, then we know, as Paul says to the Holy Spirit, I am not lying to you. My conscience bears witness with the spirit of the living God and I assure you, my brother, that my gospel is not of my own nor was it taught of me, nor was it taught of man, rather it was given to me through revelation from God. And that's our God. Our God is a revelator. Our God reveals to us. Our God is real. Our God is alive. Our God is always with us all the time. And we have the joy in our hearts. We have the, the, the covenant of everlasting life. We have the promise of Abraham. And that doesn't sound mundane to everybody, I'm sure. What is the promise of Abraham? Abraham, God said, Abraham, leave your place of nativity. Leave your household gods. Leave everything of this world and go to the place that I will show you. And the scripture says that Abraham believed in God. He left. He heard God. How else? I mean, he heard God. So he left his place of habitation. He was from Babylon. He was from Ur, the land of the Chaldees in Iraq. That's where he was from. And he left the, his world. He came out of Babylon. And God says, go to a place where I will show you. And the scripture says that he left not knowing where he was going, but he was searching for the city of God, the promised land. And he brought him to Mount Moriah, where they built the temples. That's where he brought him. And he was a pioneer. And he was the... And, and God made a promise to him. He says, Abraham, I am going to bless all of your seed that is after you. I'm going to make them as numerous as the stars, as countless as the sands of the coastlands. Why? Because you listened to me. You came out of Babylon. You received my word, my instruction, and now you're... I'm blessing you now. You see? You came out of this world, this this world of bloodshed and pestilence and the ways of this world, Hollywood and, and, and dizzy world. 
and all of this, all this corruption and lying and stealing and killing and, and all these horrible things that are happening in this world. It's a swamp. And we come out because God is a God of life. That's the test. That's the test, my friends. And the Bible says, the scriptures say that all those who do as such, God will bless them. They, he, God will give them the power to become sons of the living God. And what is that power? While I used to be in the world, everybody was in the world before they were called. Every single human being was a Gentile in the world. And then what happened to me is, as the scripture says, all who have received them, he'll give them power to become sons of the living God. I had the power through my own free will to drop the cigarettes, drop the marijuana, drop the alcohol, drop the socializing, gone. Why? I wanted to please God. You see, that's how you please God. We got to be ready. We got to be soldiers. We got to be soldiers. Because this world doesn't know God. And it's warfare. It's warfare not against people. It's warfare against the demonic realm. It's warfare against the spirits are conjured up through witchcraft. The spirits that are conjured up through Wiccans. The spirits that are conjured up from the dead. Those spirits, those demonic spirits, that's the warfare. Once those things are wiped out, my friends, that the whole world's gonna change. And it's gonna be a paradise. You see? And that's the day that God said, this is the day that I've spoken of. One of the days. The, the, the resurrection of his son. He's doing it in stages and in ages. And he's going to get rid of it. He's going to wipe it out, my friends. It's time to rejoice in your heart, knowing what is expecting, what you can expect after you die. Knowing exactly what's going to happen. God will give you that. He says to Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you. The plans to prosper you. Not the plans to harm you, but to give you an expected end. That you know that you know that you're going to be in the hands of God after your life expires in and on this earth. That's what God gives you. That's what God promises you. That's the covenant. That is the package that God has given every single human being the day that they were conceived in the womb. There was a package there for them with a new name, the real you, who God wants you to be. The reason why God created you, your makeup, your blueprint, your uniqueness, your soul, one of a kind. God has a new name and a package for you. And what we do is we seek the Lord and we ask Him for all these wonderful gifts. And He blesses us. God blessed me and He answered me. You know, in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10, 11, and 12, God says to all humanity, He says, you bring all the tithes in my storehouse. Bring it all to me. Bring your soul, flesh, and spirit. Bring it to me that there be food in my storehouses. And he says, trust me and test me in all these things and see if I will not pour out such an abundant blessing over you that your cup will overflow and I will rebuke the devourer for you. That's what he says. When I read that, my spirit was way over there. I was beside myself. I said, this is what I got to do. I got to test God. And how do I test God? Well, the Bible says you got to follow his laws. So I'm following his laws and I'm testing God. And he gave me such a blessing. It was unbelievable. And he rebuked the devourer. You know who the devourer is? The devourer is Lucifer saying the devils. Beelzebub, Beelzebub, Abaddon, Apollyon, the king of the bottomless pit, the angel of destruction, the angel of death, the legacy of Lucifer saying the devil. What's the legacy of the devil? It's death. That's who it is. That's the legacy. But it's being glamorized today. Have you seen the Lucifer commercials? Have you heard what's coming out of the, some of the people? Hail Jesus or hail Satan, they're saying. Well, I'm saying hail Jesus. That's what I'm saying. Because he's the orchestrator of life. The legacy of Jesus Christ is life, my friends. He said live. God created. He didn't say die. Jesus Christ said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm not the God of the dead. I'm the God of the living. That's who I am. I'm the God of living. You go from life to life, my friends. That's what God wants you to hear. That's all it is. You got to make up your own mind. You got to get right with the Lord. You got to come to God and humble your heart to Him, not me. You got to do that to Him. 
He's the life giver, and he's involved. We need pure worship. You know, I went into the Sikh temple, they invited me there, and we went to the upper room, and they invoked God every Friday. Well, I was up in a Sikh temple with my chaperone, and I was invited, I said, can I invoke any, any name? He says, yeah, you invoke whatever name you want. So I was invoking the name Jesus Christ. And the chaperone, not after we were done for that one hour, I, I was filled with the Spirit, and my chaperone was in tears, and he felt the Holy Spirit. And that's the only time, my friends, that's the name above all names. See, God is looking for pure worshipers.